Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the latest flying kayak flying vlog. A few days ago Thranda Design released an incredibly interesting aircraft and that's going to be the topic of today's flying vlog. We're going to take a look at the aircraft itself, we're going to take a look at the model in the sim and in either a second part or in the later parts of this video we're going to go out and take a look at what it flies like in X-Plane 11. So the aircraft you're currently seeing on screen is the Thranda Design Pilatus PC-6. The Pilatus PC-6 is a single-engine turboprop aircraft manufactured by the Pilatus Aircraft Corporation in Switzerland. It was designed in the early 1960s and has been around since then with production ending as late as 2019. This means that this aircraft has had an incredibly long and successful production run, but it also means that almost every Pilatus PC-6 available is different, with different panels, different instruments and different aircraft systems. The aircraft itself was intended as a short takeoff and landing bush plane. With its tail dragger configuration, strong turbine engine allowing for reverse thrust on landing, and powerful brakes as well as a very well dampened landing gear, it is almost perfectly suited to flying in harsh environments and taking off and landing on dirt landing strips without a lot of surrounding infrastructure. Basically, this aircraft is fitted with a Pratt & Whitney PT-6A turboprop engine in the real world as well as in the simulation, allowing for very good performance in flight and in takeoff. It can seat a maximum of 11 passengers in a very tight seating configuration and is usually configured to seat around 9 passengers in total. It can also be outfitted to carry over one ton of cargo or up to two stretchers including medical personnel to tend to those on the stretchers, thus making it an incredibly versatile aircraft both for medical purposes as well as for civilian cargo and person transport purposes. Over the years the aircraft has been outfitted with floats and skis for landings on glaciers or landings on water and it has also been used as a skydiving and flying club airplane extensively as well as air taxi services and even by the CIA. The aircraft finds its purpose and role in many remote areas of the world including bush airstrips in Africa, Asia and even the highest regions of the Himalaya mountains in Nepal where one Pilatus PC-6 performed the highest ever intentional landing by a fixed-wing aircraft. In general, all these things make for an incredibly rugged airplane, and Thranda being known for their Quest Kodiak for X-Plane 11, another bush plane turboprop aircraft, are of course extremely good at creating an aircraft like this for X-Plane 11. In today's video I wanted to start by giving you this short overview of the aircraft and I'm now going to move on and walk you through what Thranda did with this airplane and why it's an incredible beautiful piece of simulation equipment in my opinion. First things first, purchase price at the moment is around $34 or your regional equivalent that translates to just under 31 euros if I'm correct with the current exchange rates. Basically this means that it is actually a fairly cheap add-on for the features it offers which I'm going to talk about in just a second. You can purchase it off the xplane.org store where you can then download a zip file which will then be extracted and after a simple copy paste and entry of registration number in the simulation you can enjoy this beautiful Pilatus PC-6. Alright, now that we've discussed installation, purchase and download, let's take a quick look at the actual aircraft's menu features. Thranda aircraft always come with a Thranda pop-up menu. 
This allows us to cycle through several pages, which you can see right here on the left side, and perform different actions, like for example opening a door or closing it again. We can turn on external lights to check them or turn them off. And of course we can remove and add tie downs or other things like for example prop fasteners or pitot heats or pitot tubes and things like that. In general, we can also control the livery, which is something that I've always really loved about this and that I really enjoy with the Thrander airplanes. You have a dynamic livery editor, which allows you to change colors and other things and basically create your own livery from scratch. Oh, for some reason it's not showing the registration number. Once you apply a livery change, it's going to reload the entire airplane load in a placeholder livery, you can see that happening right now and once the placeholder livery has been loaded in it's going to replace it again with the dynamic livery now it's in the place which does look a bit weird from the outside as you can see the interior and there you go now basically it shows my registration number and of course you can edit different colors all around the aircraft and the wing on the weight and balance page, you can basically control the weight and balance, load pre-saved weight and balance configurations. Here, for example, I'm loading, and you can, of course, also save configurations. And you can fill the fuel tanks or, of course, empty them, as well as turning on and off the external fuel tanks. The Pilatus PC-6 can be fitted with two external fuel tanks, which hold about half the value of the in-wing fuel tanks and thus exchange the, uh, ex exchange the range, <laughs> extend the range quite a bit, sorry. Getting my words all weirded up. On the camera page you can basically toggle to different camera views and take a look at the airplane from different angles. Oh, this also is a great angle actually to take a look at the engine like it. Yeah, you can also take a look at the engine. Anyways, that was not all I wanted to show you. I also want to show you the audio settings, which basically allows you to change and adjust the volumes of the different parts of the aircraft, as well as turn sound on or off globally, similar to what X-Plane shows you. They also have a slew mode, which allows you to reposition the aircraft it is experimental and may not work perfectly on your system or my crash explain. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm probably going to give it a try at some point. Then you have the panel page, which I'm not actually going to talk a lot about now because I'm going to talk about that later on. But actually one of the developers made a great video on the dynamic panel editing feature and it's a feature that I really love. And the miscellaneous page is for eventual future additions. And it also shows you the Quest Kodiak and previews that, which is really cool because the Quest Kodiak is another really awesome aircraft. Alright, without further ado, we've talked enough about the outside of this awesome airplane. Let's just quickly go ahead and hop inside. What you can see right in front of you right now is the aircraft's panel. This is probably going to look different from the panel you're going to experience when you purchase the aircraft for the first time. And that's because they have, as stated, a dynamic panel editor. So I'm going to quickly go to the panels. Basically, in this Thrander menu, you can edit your aircraft's panel. You can edit where each instrument is located and what instruments you have. It comes supplied with five presets, or four presets as far as I know. I just created a fifth one. And changing the preset will basically change the aircraft's general configuration. So preset 5 is the one that I created for myself and that I currently use. It's containing the Reality XP GTN 750, which is a cool little add-on that you can purchase separately, which allows for a much more realistic Garmin GPS simulation. And of course all the normal and average switches, as well as an Aspen Avionics primary flight display. Of course, you can also set yourself up with various versions of an analog panel, 
and different panel backgrounds and of course different GPS units. Here we've got the dual GNS 430 unit for example and here we've got the GNS 530 and GNS 430 and in panel preset 0 we've got another GNS 530 and 430 as well as analog instruments instead of the digital little instrument set here, the Aspen EFD. But you can also change individual instruments. Cycling through a library of 44 instruments, you can turn these instruments on and off, thus showing them. Here we've got a second altimeter, and if you turn it on, it'll show up at some default location. For example, here it'll show up there, covering our VSI. Of course, we want to keep our VSI. And we can cycle through a lot of instruments, including this checklist, which we can put up here. And you can see the changes directly. You can even, even enable a 3D panel edit mode, which would then allow us to basically move these instruments along the 3D panel, wherever we would want them. Which is honestly pretty amazing. I don't want this instrument at the moment, so I'm just going to turn it off again, turn off the 3D panel edit mode, and get back there. And I'm going to move back to my standard kind of preset, the one that I currently use most of the time when flying, which is right this one. Oh, and one feature I forgot to mention is you can change the panel backgrounds. So you can have this white clear panel, and you can have a darker background, and you can have this blue one, and that's the three ones that are included at the moment. I've got to be honest, I really love the darker panel backgrounds on general aviation aircraft. I don't I think they somehow they just they look cooler and they make the instruments stand out a little more when you're using them. The clear one of course looks a lot cleaner. The one I prefer for the moment is the blue one because blue is my favorite color. Anyways, enough talking about this. This is already a feature which makes me personally think that this aircraft is definitely worth the purchase because there is no other aircraft that offers both the dynamic livery editor and of course the dynamic panel editor. But in general, this is just an insane aircraft. It's wonderfully modeled, it's beautifully done, and it's incredible fun. Now, the video length at the moment is 12 minutes roundabout and I don't want to exceed 15 minutes, so I'm not droning on and on and on about this topic and boring you guys. So I'm gonna take the pattern flight we're gonna do and put that into a separate video. For now, I hope I've given you a good overview over the features that Thranda provides, and I hope that you can just, yeah, see what this aircraft does, enjoy it, and maybe purchase it for yourself, because it is an awesome piece of flight simulation software that I've got to be honest, I really enjoy myself. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and walk you guys through a startup and pattern flight with this airplane in a few seconds. One thing I did want to show you though is that you can pop out important instruments like for example the Aspen EFD of course and of course also the Garmin GTN 750. Alright, so I'll just be back in a few seconds and I wish you guys safe travels, blue skies and many happy landings and see you soon.